If you were the man running the Detroit Lions, would Stafford still be the guy you took at number one overall? He would be on the short list, but right now, and again, it's early, we still have two months. Right now, I'm not convinced that he's the best player in this draft, and I'm not convinced that he's going to be a franchise elite quarterback, so I think I would pass on him. I would take a single or a double rather than shooting for the home run and maybe striking out. And I know Mel's going to you know, go crazy about the fact that I have Stafford 8 <laughs> on my board, and you can't do that, and he should be 48 and all that stuff. But the bottom line is, if you don't love a guy and think that he's going to be the number one quarterback and can lead your franchise, you don't draft him at number one. His History tells you that's the biggest mistake you can take. So I would either take one of the top offensive tackles or Aaron Curry there and move on and, and try to get a quarterback later in the draft to develop and work free agency, so on and so forth. <laughs> Mel, Mel, rebuttal? Well, well, he's speaking for me, Josh, so I can take this segment off. Hey, all I can say is that if you think that Matthew Stafford is good enough to be a top 10 pick, then you think he'd be one heck of a starting quarterback. The word we use too much is franchise quarterback. Is Eli Manning a franchise quarterback? Yeah, he won a Super Bowl. Ben Roethlisberger won too. Yeah, he's a franchise quarterback. Midway through the season, when Eli Manning won a Super Bowl, people were saying, he's no good, he's a bust. You get too wrapped up in, is Matthew Stafford a franchise quarterback, and that's stealing in perception, not always reality. Mel, Mel, it's, it's an odds game, and it's a money game. And so the, if the odds are not in his favor, in my opinion, of being you gotta, that... You gotta uh, let me finish, okay? Because you're gonna pay your number one regardless. But, but this is how mistakes are made. If you think he's the eighth best player, don't wait, take him one because God. he's a quarterback. Oh, that's my that only argument. Come on! on! When the producers of this show came to me and said I was gonna split screen with you, I thought to myself, Todd Mache does not deserve to clean up the shit left behind by my family's Jack Russell Terrier, Matt Liner. But I gave you the benefit of the doubt because I'm that kind of guy. Don't take Touch, shut the up. Do you have any idea what I have to go through to prepare for the NFL draft, okay? I have a company, they're called Kuiper Industries, they're based out in Bangor, Maine. We have 50 employees. All we do is crunch numbers. What does that have to do with Matthew Stafford? It has everything to do with Matthew Stafford, Todd. Because to you, Matthew Stafford is just a ball player, just a hotshot quarterback with a cannon for a right arm and a 4 40 But to me, he's a man. Because you know what I've done? I've gone out, I've hired a light camera crew to follow him around the fine University of Georgia for seven to eight hours a day without his knowledge. Do you know how many times a week Matthew Stafford eats frozen yogurt? Because I'll tell you, I'll tell you right now! Go ahead. Seven or eight times a week, often with some kind of mixing. My point is, Todd, my point is, Todd, that you can't come waltzing in here to the Sports Center studio, the studio that I built, okay? With your fruity haircut and that ridiculous fake big tan and think you can put Matthew Stafford, eighth on your board, not draft him number one, and Mel Kuyper Jr., the kite, will go after you. Like the Octo Mom goes after a jar of pickles. Oh, I'm out! If someone came to me and said, make a draft board of the most worthless ESPN analysts, it would be everyone from ESPN Deportes, Barry Melrose, and you, Todd McShay, you slack-jawed piece of